Planet 2 is one of the top creative games to put you in the driving seat. You have the creative control to build what you want, where you want, and the possibilities are endless. Well, almost endless. I'm guessing you're here because you too have felt the pain and frustration of the dreaded lag. You're beavering away, building and running your dream zoo, when all of a sudden everything is jittery, stuttering, maybe even freezing for periods of time. With an open world build game like Planet Zoo, it's inevitable that the bigger, more complex your zoo gets, eventually you will hit the limit of what the game can process. And with that comes the lag, the freezes and the stuttering. When you hit that limit really depends on the system you're running. More powerful PCs with top-end graphics cards will obviously perform better than ones running with the recommended minimum specifications, but even beefy gaming setups will eventually run into problems the bigger the zoos get. If you're running into lag problems, first and foremost, I'd advise to check your PC settings and graphics drivers updates and whatnot, just to make sure you've optimised play outside of the game first. I'm not going to get into the details of this here because the information I give you here will probably quickly go out of date as drivers are updated all the time. What I would recommend is checking out the Planet Zoo advice page on this to make sure everything is tip top before you even get into the game. I'll pin a link to that page in the video description. If you follow the advice there, you may find that the lag problem clears up without having to take any further steps. That being said, if you've already optimised all the hardware stuff, there are also some in-game tweaks that you can implement to delay the dreaded lag too. So here's my top six reasons why your game might be lagging and what you can do to fix it. Number one, I would suggest changing some of the graphics settings. This is an obvious one, but worth considering regardless. In the settings tab under graphics, this is where the graphics settings live that affect how your game looks. Most of these have options ranging from off and low to high and very high. For me personally, lots of these settings don't even look that different when you set them to low or off. Reducing some of these settings down could make a big difference in your game performance. One setting that I turn off completely is shadows. Yes, the game does look beautiful with shadows, but turning this off completely, you do still get dark and light areas. And after a while, I don't even notice the lack of shadows anymore. Another setting I've turned off completely is water reflections. This is a nifty visual effect where the water reflects the sky and objects you've placed. So yes, it's realistic, but in terms of game performance, for me personally, it's a setting I can live with this being permanently turned off. Of course, your mileage may vary, but I would suggest giving each of these settings in the graphics tab a go at the lower values and see if any offer a compromise that you can live with. My second tip is about limiting guests and staff. The number of guests your game is having to process will absolutely affect performance. The more guests in your zoo, the more functions it will be processing in the background. Every guest or group of guests, the game is processing where they're going, what they're doing, what they're thinking all of the time. I believe Planet Zoo tops out at 10,000 guests and there's a reason for that. When you have a small zoo with 100 or so visitors, that's not really an issue. It's when you're getting into a couple of thousand or more. You may notice things slowing down as the game figures out what each of those thousands of visitors are doing. So how do you control how many guests are visiting? You can artificially limit this in the settings tab. Of course, the more guests you have, the better your game will be in terms of profitability and stuff. So it's worth doing an investigation with this. Figure out how many guests your game can actually handle and try and stick to that limit. Like I mentioned, the biggest problem with this is when you're working in challenge or franchise mode. Even in this situation, you can limit the number of guests and still be profitable. If you put in a little effort to optimize the gameplay to make the most out of the guests you already have, rather than relying on ticket sales. The happier the guests are, the more likely they are to part with their cash. For example, have you thought about guest pathing around the zoo? What I mean by that is make sure there's enough room on paths for them to navigate without issue. Guests getting tied up in a bottleneck or long winding paths to get from point A to point B, that's time wasted in the zoo where they're not doing anything but draining their happiness meters. When you need to restrict the number of guests for performance reasons, you want them in and out as quickly as possible, speeding up that continuous churn for new ticket sales. Similar to tip two, tip three is about the staff. Now, as with guests, every staff member will also have a direct impact on the amount of activities your game is having to process. I would recommend getting familiar with the staff management screen and managing work zones. Take a look at their workloads and figure out whether staff you have are really necessary. 
when available, make sure that your trainers staff to the highest level so that they're working more efficiently. Set work zones and ensure staff facilities buildings are close by to each zone so they're not wasting time walking to facilities. Optimising your staff properly will avoid having to hire more than you need and in turn that will lower the impact of staff on performance and processing too. Also at a good point on this, be careful about placing shops and information points that you then delete. Every new facility that you put down will spawn another vendor and when deleted the vendor will annoyingly still exist even if the shop was never open. It may seem a bit cruel but make sure you're firing any unwanted vendors otherwise they're just wandering around with nothing to do taking up precious processing power. That's all I can think of to do with the staff so on to tip number four which is piece count. When decorating your zoo different objects will have different impact on performance. Stationary objects like walls, flooring, non-animated objects. Personally I found these have little to no impact on game performance. It's the moving objects that are the problem. So special effects, animatronics, limit these where you can. Placing hundreds of water effects for example. When on pause you're now telling the game to render in the animation of that effect and the more you add the more it has to process. A sneaky one with this is nature objects. Now some plants are stationary but others will be animated like trees rustling in the breeze. You may not even have noticed this, you have to look really closely to see which plants are the ones that move and which are the ones that are stationary. So definitely scrutinise the flora and fauna you're placing, does it move? That's going to take up more processing than the stuff that doesn't. Another item to watch out for is guest facilities like barriers and curbs. Guests will be interacting with these objects where it's giving them a signal not to walk there. So everyone that you place down will take some processing and the more you use that will build up eventually. Things like bins and benches, if it's not being used, get rid of it. With media devices and custom content, interactive screens like videos are going to take up more processing than say a sign or audio media. I'll admit I haven't done major research into this but it's just something to consider if you are struggling and you've done everything else. Give switching out some of the video media with a static one and see if that makes a difference. Tip number five for what could be causing lag is habitat climbable and interactive pieces. Another process hungry piece in Planet Zoo is the climbable objects and interactive pieces placed in habitats. So enrichment items. Although enrichment items are necessary to enrich your animal's environment, they will trigger animations every time they're used, which in turn is creating an activity that the game has to process, so make sure you're not overdoing them. The habitat tab that you can see when you click on the door of the habitat, that will tell you if you're satisfying the animal's enrichment needs. So once this goes green 100%, you don't need to add any more, it's not going to make them more enriched beyond 100%. With climbable pieces, some of these are counted as enrichment items, so they'll be in the enrichment items tab and it'll be like the modular climbing frame pieces and stuff like that. Others, they are climbable pieces, but they're in the construction tab. So you might be tempted to make a hard shelter or decorate the habitat with these climbable pieces. It's definitely worth bearing in mind if you've got a piece that's got the climbable tag on, which you can see from the label here, that means that the animals that can climb, they can climb up this and it will also trigger the climbable processes that go along with that. The fact that the animals can actually climb pieces you put down in Planet Zoo is to be applauded. It's a brilliant strategy and a big feature of the game. Just don't overdo it because you're going to overload the processing with too many climbable pieces. Number six reason why you might be experiencing lag in the game is the number of animals you have on the go at any one time. Just like with guests and staff, the more animals you have, the more it's going to affect the performance. Of course, managing animals is supposed to be the whole point of the game, but there is a few ways you can do this which will also reduce the lag. My first suggestion would be to stick to a limit on the number of habitats you're running at any given time. Realistically, your guests aren't going to have time to visit more than, say, 20 habitats. So at any given time, more than 20 habitats is going to be a drain on performance with no real benefit. I will stress, this doesn't mean you have to limit your game to only 20 habitats per zoo, but what you could do is rotate the animals in use for variety. The Trade Center has storage space for 200 animals, which I think is quite generous. So use this as part of your gameplay strategy. I would rotate animals frequently between those being exhibited and those in storage. So one week you might have a lemur habitat active, Next week the lemurs are in storage and you have a lion habitat active instead. Guests love it when new animals are introduced to the zoo 
and they'll flock to a new habitat in droves. So make use of that by switching them out every so often. Another way to manage lag from too many animals is by limiting the number of animals in each habitat. Some animals, like say the pangolin, they live in small groups of two to three. Others, like the flamingos, they can live in huge groups quite happily with 500 of them all together. Just because they can live with that many in harmony doesn't mean they have to. If you are having issues with lag, I would definitely suggest aiming for the minimum, not the maximum. It's easy to see how many they need. If you go into the species data tab, that will tell you how many are needed for social happiness. Something else to watch out for with this is how many offspring they have in pet pregnancy. Some animals will only have one or two per pregnancy. Others, like the tortoises, can have up to eight offspring in one go. If you're not watching closely, you can end up with a situation way out of control, way too many animals in one go. The babies will take up loads of processing just like the adults do. So be careful with that. And I would suggest only having one breeding pair per species on the go at once. Put all the rest of them on birth control. Just save yourself the hassle later on. That's my top suggestions on what might be causing your game to lag and how to fix it. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any other suggestions, leave a comment and I'll be sure to compile a complete list based off of others' experiences. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.